In this video I'm going to demonstrate the marking and the cutting of a true housing joint. It's a very easy joint to make and uh, very useful as well too for making shells and the legs. This is an animated assembly of the joint showing the housing and the square end that's cut that fits into it. And here we have an orthographic projection done using SOLIDWORKS to a scale of 1 to 1 with an exploded view and then we have the whiteboard drawn that has included in it the setting out of the piece. And for the setting out of the piece here we marked over our lens to start with and then we want to locate where the other piece the piece goes into the housing so that's what I'm doing here is measured over 50 millimeters from the edge you can see I've demonstrated the thickness of the wood must be placed and then to square the line and I'm measuring it along the edge which is 20 and using the square tri-square from the face edge and you can see it matches up to the thickness of the wood if I wanted to center a piece on another section all I do is I can offer it up to the end line measure what's left and divide by two if you're trying to center it on a, a different size piece. So what we need to do now is square the, the lines onto the edge and I'm going to square it the whole way around uh, just a little bit lighter on the far side because it might be handy if you're locating pins in it afterwards uh, for centering it and after that there we need to set the gauge to mark the depth of the housing and the depth of the housing in this is 10 millimeters you can see the, the stock and stem and the spur of the marking gauge and it's been adjusted to a distance of 10 millimeters and then I'm going to mark this onto the edge I take it taken out from the vise here I'm turning it just so it can be a wee bit easier to see on the camera make sure that you work from the face side and this is just from the opposite side but I'm still working from the face side to mark onto the face edge and of course in insert the waist into this as well so once you have the gauge line marked in it there, we're in ready for the cutting and you can see I'm picking out a chisel that's going to suit the width of the trench. If it is a much bigger trench, you may have to make it an extra cut, but for this one here, an 18mm chisel is going to cut out the 20mm wide um, trench. And you can see I'm lining myself up with the saw using the backstroke. Into the bench hook here, I have my heel of my hand pressure and down on the piece to keep it steady and my thumb is a guide and my finger is a guide and you take as many backstrokes as you need to get the saw cut started and then you can proceed into the full cut using the full length of the saw and all I'm showing here is that you're making sure that you're using the full length of the saw when you're doing this and this is the side from which you can see the line as you're working your way down and I'm checking the line as I go so as I don't go down past the line and I can make adjustments to the angle of the saw to ensure that I get down exactly to the line on both sides which I've achieved there now. Now for the next shoulder line that I have to cut I'm going to end up having to look over the saw and this is a little bit more difficult so I have to use a thumb on my left hand to guide my saw for making the back strokes uh, to start off the cut and I don't start into the full stroke of the cut until I've got the full back backstrokes made to make the cut across the piece so it won't move around. Then all I have to do is concentrate on the line that's square to the edge and again I'm checking it to see that I don't go down past the line and then once I've hit the line that's where I stop and it's very important because when I go to chisel this the chisel will want to follow the saw lines so good saw lines ensures that there's a good clean trench for you and I'm putting it into the face at a slight angle I'm taking the chisel out to the edge I'm standing at 90 degrees to the bench chisel now is level here using the mallet with the chisel I take it out to the edge and I'm going to tilt it and work up towards the middle so I tilt the angle of the chisel very steep and work my way down towards the line and up towards the middle of the trench that's what I'm demonstrating there again if you have to set off again you'd like to keep the chisel relatively level to the, the piece itself and that's what that helps you do now I've turned it over to the other side again 90 degrees to the side of the piece and not square onto the piece and I do exactly the same thing from the opposite side up towards the middle and it'll be fairly obvious there now when we take it back towards the camera you can see it's worked up from both sides or both lines one side is going to work out cleaner than another another so whichever is my best side I'm going to start to work from that again and I can level the chisel as well too off the piece but here what I'm doing is I'm taking the bench hook placing it on the ground which elevates my knee put my left elbow onto the top of my knee and position myself at a comfortable angle to the vise and the piece and I'm going to clean it both hands behind the cutting edge and run the chisel straight across with good control over the chisel and your elbows close to, elbow close to your side as well so the driving force is coming from your shoulder 
and uh, your what's your knee elevated. You can see there's a little frays in at the shoulder line, and to clean them, you put your thumb on top of the chisel and work 90 degrees straight down into that. I can clean off those little pieces, and you can see there's not too much in it, and that leaves me with a clean trench. I can take another piece or a separate piece and uh, offer it into it to see that the trench is it's fitting into the trench. There is a method for cleaning off the edges. I'm not showing here, but um, it, this here works out pretty good. And you can see it's fitting in nice and close and tight and square, and there's no gaps along the edge. After that, you need to remove the pieces. And we have a student here is going to demonstrate the saw cut, setting it up in the in the uh, bench hook, starting with the backstroke again here, and the thumb as a guide. You can see good enough backstrokes been taken here to get the saw cut started. Maybe starting into the full stroke of the saw a bit too quick rather than taking the line the full way across the piece. And the saw cut here now, we're looking at the saw to see with the finger as a guide, keeping it square to the line, which is pretty good. A little bit short, short on the stroke, could be a little bit longer, but it seems to be going reasonably well here now, and it's cut through the piece. And that needs to be repeated for the other sides. He's offering the piece in here now that he's cut square, very important cut to be able to cut square, but he's struggling here to see which way it should go in, and it's always face edge to face edge when it's been offered into each other. You can see it's a little bit tight maybe, which could do with a little bit of cleaning. And uh, he's gonna use the vise here to try and push it on together. Maybe not ideal if it's too tight because if you're gonna use it with glue, it will push all the glue out. And that's the marking out and the cutting of a true housing joint.